Well, folks, you did it. Thanks to all of you and the massive amount of responses I got from my last video, you, the viewers, did choose my elk hunting rifle and my deer hunting rifle for the 2023 Montana hunting season. Now, let's look at what you chose. My call to action to the viewers to select my hunting rifles for the 2023 season went primarily to YouTube, also to Instagram, and also to Facebook. But I added them all up, and the winner was clear. For my 2023 Montana elk hunting season, you, the viewer, chose the Savage Model 99F in 300 Savage. This gun was manufactured in 1955 by the wear marks and the receiver where the blue's been worn off. There's definitely some patterns on the bottom where probably a combination of sweat, snow, rain, whatever, has created a bit of a pattern of wear on the receiver. Now the bore on this rifle is in fantastic shape and the gun overall is in great shape, just a little bit of bluing off the receiver. I have never killed anything with this, so I hope 2023 will be the year that I take something and you guys decided that I would be hunting elk with it. So I'll probably do some more in-depth videos about this gun, like a full on review, but stay tuned for the hunting season and we'll see how effective I am with it. Now for the rifle that you all voted for me to use for deer hunting this year, that competition was a lot closer. The votes went from one rifle to the other all week. But the winner, by a narrow margin, was a Cimarron 1894 rifle in 3030. This Cimarron 1894 rifle is brand new. I mean, I've target shot with it, but I've never hunted with it. And I'm very excited to hunt with it this year. In fact, had you guys not selected this, this was the gun that I was hoping to hunt deer with anyway. This Cimarron 1894 rifle is beautiful, and this is what you could expect right out of the box if you were to get one. I have made one change, and that was to add a brass front sight from Skinner Sights Company. And I did that because I wanted to increase the visibility over the bead that came on it, but also elevation-wise, I needed to have a higher front sight to where I could do some filing and get my zero exactly where I wanted it. You may not have that issue, but for the ranges that I like to shoot at, I needed that flexibility. So I just added this brass sight from Skinner Sights and did the filing myself. It was easy to do. If you have any questions, they have super customer service. They can walk you through it if you wanted to do it yourself. But the Cimarron 1894 rifle in 3030 will be my 2023 deer hunting rifle, chosen by you. Even though the majority of you viewers chose the Cimarron 1894 rifle in 3030 to be my deer rifle, I do have to give an honorable mention to the Cimarron Spencer Carbine, because the Spencer Carbine was a close second to this, and I may, in fact, use that if I was to get a second deer tag. Now, I'm gonna give you a little bit of background information on these two rifles. This one, of course, is the Savage Model 99 in 300 Savage. And that cartridge is right here. It looks similar to a 308, a little bit shorter, but it was developed around the same time. It was actually developed before the 308 and was largely an inspiration for the 308. Savage was trying to develop a short 30-06 round. And now while this does not match today's 30-06 power and velocity. Back when this was invented, it wasn't that far off, but it fit in a lever action repeater that was a lot shorter action than the big long actions that would run a 30-06, like the Winchester 1895. Now my Cimarron 1894 rifle is chambered in 3030. The 3030 was originally called the 30 WCF or Winchester Centerfire and it was the very first smokeless cartridge that Winchester put in its repeating rifles. Now here are those two cartridges side by side. This is the 300 Savage that I'm going to be using for elk, and this is the 3030 that I'm going to be using for deer. Now both of these are a 150 grain bullet. The cases are pretty similar in length, however, 
The 300 Savage does have a little bit fatter case, so a higher powder capacity. The 300 Savage does shoot faster than the 3030 by quite a bit. You'll notice it has a spitzer bullet and it can have a ballistic tip on it uh, because it's, the 300 Savage goes in a rotary magazine where the 3030 has a blunt tip on it because it goes into a tubular magazine. In a tubular magazine, like on the 1894, the rounds sit in the magazine like this. So the tip of the bullet is actually resting on the primer and the case around the primer. Now the 300 Savage has a rotary magazine, so the rounds are stacked like this rather than one behind the other. And that allows for a pointed or spitzer bullet to be safely loaded into a repeating rifle. Because if you had a spitzer bullet, now this doesn't have a very sharp point on it, but if that set right on that primer, let's see if I can get even closer. During recoil, you could see how the pointed bullet could possibly cause the cartridge in front of it to detonate. So those are the two cartridges that I'm gonna use. I'm really excited to see what the effect is on game. I've killed a lot of animals with a 3030, but I've never killed anything with a 300 Savage. If I'm lucky enough to take an elk and a deer with these rounds, I will do my best to show you the results. However, I may not show you the detailed results on the animals because I don't want to get censored by YouTube for showing too much graphic stuff. But I will definitely give you a report on what the damage to tissue was on each one of these rounds. So there you have it, folks. These are the rifles that you selected for me to use for my 2023 hunting season. You chose the Savage Model 99F and 300 Savage for my elk hunting gun, and the Cimarron 1894 rifle and 3030 for my deer hunting gun. Stay tuned to see how it goes. Folks, thank you for watching. If you like this content, please give me a thumbs up down below. And if you'd like to follow along with how this story ends up with my 2023 hunting season, or just follow my content in general, and these cool old guns, click that subscribe button. I also want to let you know that the Adventure Cowboy website at AdventureCowboy.com is up and running. We are adding more stuff to it all the time and we're thinking about selling art on there, especially considering that the holiday season is about to come up and we have lots of photography in my family, including photos like this of our mighty Ferguson who's out here in the pasture. If you'd be interested in purchasing the art that is going to be hanging on this wall, like the photo behind me, let me know and we will put a store on the website where you can buy the different photos that I'm going to cycle in and out of the studio wall. Until next time, thank you again for watching and we'll see you down the trail.